Okay, um, so we're getting started again uh, with Dimitri Mokov on uh, file stem defragmentation. Yeah. Oh. Is it working? Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Dmitry Monakov. I'm working in uh, Parallels. Uh, now it's uh, changed its name to Vitosa, but that's not that important. Important the question I want to ask you in my talk to, uh, to give you about the file system. Uh, file system was designed very long time ago. Uh, tradition file system uh, design was invented when uh, whole disk belonged to the file system. And actually, there's uh, quite uh, a bit of facts about a file system. File system divide its space on a single bl blocks. Uh, usually, it's like a 4K. Uh, it's operate by these blocks and. There is a uh, effect which appears when you operate your file system, then your file is not continuous. If your file is not continuous, there's this effect called as fragmentation. Um, okay, here's, that's the disk, and here's the files. As you can see, inode A contain two blocks which are not continuous. Inode A is fragmented, Inode B is also fragmented, and Inode C, uh, I C is also fragmented. Inode B uh, contains of two, uh, two separate chunks, and the um, fragmentation effect is less uh, important for the Inode B. That is just a picture. There are a lot of effective um, schemes uh, which operate, uh, which file system try to avoid fragmentation. Um, file system has such mechanisms. I, uh, just, uh, file system try to manage uh, disk space, try to spread all these data across the disk. For, just imagine that uh, this classroom. You don't have to put all these people in this area, right? You have to spread it for a whole uh, uh, class, uh, so one should um, affect another. Uh, another uh, effective scheme is to pack small files uh, right together. Uh, this is important to, for example, if you have a lot of uh, small compilation files, you, it's reasonable to pack it together to not to spread the space. And also, that is a delay allocation scheme. Uh, it's, uh, this also state that you don't have to allocate something on the disk unless you know how, how much your file will be at the end. But well, then user space try to close files you already know that it's supposed to be that size, and it's good time to make an allocation decision in which place you have to place your data of the file. But still, there is an online offline fragmentation RP, which still exists, still exists for many file system, XT4, uh, XFS, um, and the question why it exists, why it's necessary. Then defragmentation is required. Then your file system is uh, very, very close to full, like this classroom. You cannot make a good allocation decision if it's that full. Uh, this, uh, this class is full like a 90% and uh, five minutes ago, it will be like full on 110%. Um, uh, it's hard to make a good arrangement in that class because it's too busy. Uh, that's the question where um, online allocation techniques cannot work and only offline or online defragmentation mechanism can work. Uh, we're um, F-alloc and unlink patterns for like 
um, one can allocate giant file, giant file and then cut each, each second block of the file. So you can, will have like very fragmented file, a uh, very fragmented uh, block device and you cannot do any good allocation decisions. That's the moment where defragmentation is also required. And special uh, read pattern, for example, you can uh, get a statistic which files is read uh, on your boot process. And then you can place all your files one to another, so one can read it uh, sequentially, which this uh, improve your boot process significantly. Um, I have read a paper from Mozilla, they have, a, have really good numbers. So, here's a basic terms of uh, fragmentation problem. There are two types of fragmentation. One is uh, fragmentation for a single file. One file uh, consists of several fragments. That's uh, single file fragmentation. And another problem is a so-called directory fragmentation problem. You have a um, directory which contains small files, uh, pictures, your Linux kernel files, and so on. And they are spread across the disk. This is not always good. Uh, sometimes you have to pocket because you, for example, your cat pictures. Uh, you scan all your directory by an alphabet and it's reasonable to pocket. So, a single file fragmentation and directory, uh, directory fragmentation. In order to, so we define the problem and which IP we have at the moment. We have two separate um, IPs, actually it's uh, IOCTL, XT4 uh, has um, so-called move IOC and X XFS has move uh, swap extents. The internals is not that important. Um, they are quite similar. Uh, except that XT4 does really, really hardcore stuff because its swap extends inside uh, it and does the data coping and before, at, uh, um, then I first start to manage this code inside the kernel, I think that it's ridiculous and impossible to make it right. But currently it's 100% solid, you can, uh, we have even test which does a random rearrangement inside file system and it's never corrupt, so feel free to use it. Um, XFS uh, IPI is a bit easier from kernel side, kind of point of view because actual data copying uh, happens inside user space, so IP is quite similar but a slight changes exist. Okay. Let's see, now let's go back to our cloud solution. Uh, what's, what is the real disk and what's uh, the cloud? Here's a picture how we, uh, how our file system in, uh, coexist with a traditional rotated or, or traditional disk. File system correspond to, file system blocks correspond to disk uh, one to another one-to-one -one, uh, with a linear uh, mapping. But uh, when we got to the virtual disk, uh, we do not longer have a traditional disk. Uh, we talk about images. QCO images, uh, DMFIN provision images, uh, P-loop images, not, I'm talking about not continuous. We try to pocket. Um, and things got complicated because um, our virtual disk tried to divide its own space on another buckets. Um, I call it buckets into comparison to file system blocks. So file system 
divide its own space and virtual image uh, divided in, uh, into its own box. So we have two types of indirection. And to represent it, let's look here. Here's a fair thin provision block allocator. It's, let's go with Kuko image. It has giant uh, blo uh, buckets and red, uh, red blocks is a file system blocks. So one A not longer uh, strictly linked to this place, it's uh, placed here. And these uh, blue uh, square, squares, actually the space which was allocated inside this virtual uh, image, but not used. For example, uh, you buy a um, hosting in, in somewhere in the cloud, you allocate your space, and you only use um, blocks like A4, or 3, or 5, and A1. That's the only use. But actually, um, space uh, which allocated inside a virtual image, it's like this giant block, B1 and B2. So there is a huge amount of inefficient space usage, as you can see, these blocks, these <laughs> blue squares. Um, and then I've got a, got an email from my customer. Dude, I'm by you. You tell me that your solution is the best. I buy it. I install it in my good server and my email uh, server uh, use only four gigabytes of data. But your virtual image cons consumes uh, 30 gigabytes of my super fast SSD disk. I'm disappointed. Do, do something about that. Um, here's a picture which represents actual numbers, but okay. Um, here's a technical overview of what customer uh, actually said. Inefficient space usage. In the worst case, uh, we can be ineffective like one, uh, only four, uh, only 0.4 percent can be actually used. All, everything else can be wasted, which is very, very inefficient. A uh, bad I.O. pattern, if your data is spread across the disk in an inefficient way, your uh, I.O. performance will be really bad. Um, we already know that Trim, whether it's a rumors that Trim or Discard or whenever you call it, can help. No, it can't help in a cloud solutions, in a virtual images solution, because look here. Even if file system does trim for all these free blocks, it, uh, virtual image cannot make it free because virtual image can operate uh, giant buckets. So no one can help unless we help uh, virtual uh, image to relocate uh, its blocks more effectively. And then going back. What's are the worst case uh, where defragmentation take effect? Mail servers. Many small files uh, continuous, uh, allocated and deleted continuously. New servers, picture servers, uh, mail servers, and so on. Yep. Oh. Okay. Here's a time log of block allocation. Um, first uh, stage, uh, fetch mail uh, has these red squares of block which is used. Uh, then um, user c uh, come in and delete some blocks, uh, the blue squares, and then fetch mail get a new mail again. And that's the third stage. As we can see, usage 
do not change. Uh, from user point of view, uh, number of data he used, it's almost the same, but virtual image uh, start to getting bigger. Bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. That's called uh, virtual image bloating and you probably already saw it on a daily basis. Uh, just look at your image QCO for, for QMO, whenever you call it, it's always bloating from time to time. Even if you not place uh, more data, just because your file system in li is alive and try to allocate and free blocks on a daily basis. Okay, what we have to do? Uh, in order to fix a defragmentation problem, we have to ask a file system or take uh, tools to, to make an allocation decision in, uh, and take in, um, yep. TP is thin provisioning, um, yep. Um, Thin provisioning virtual block, uh, virtual block solution, it's almost the same. So thin provisioning, it's, it's divide a whole building to the flats. Oh. So we, in order to overcome uh, and fix the uh, fragmentation problem, we have to uh, take into account our virtual image and thin provisioning structure. Okay, now we, uh, that's a good uh, phrase, but we still have to define mathematically what to relocate and where to relocate. Here's the basic overview of uh, defragmentation, pro uh, defragmentation processes. Like uh, an FSGK, it um, consists of several stages. First stage is to <coughs> similar to a uh, file system check. Uh, we scan a whole disk to understand uh, which blocks are busy, which are not. Second stage, we have to understand, we know which blocks are free, which no blocks are not. We have to understand which blocks belongs to which file. Uh, for that, um, yeah. Other, I will explain later. Here's the first stage. We just scan it sequentially and uh, understand which blocks uh, are busy, which are not. As we can see, B3, uh, bucket 3 uh, is almost full and B1 is almost free. Uh, B1 is the worst part because we have to pay only for a whole bucket just for two busy blocks. That's the worst case in that picture. Okay, uh, now we do know um, which block are free, which are not. We have to understand which blocks belongs to which file. We have to scan a uh, whole file system and make uh, FEMAP uh, IOCTL to understand uh, which block be belongs to which file. And as you can see from these errors, uh, here's a picture. Now, <coughs> I will explain it. Okay. Uh, now, we, once we know uh, which blocks belong to which file, it's time to make a decision. What we wanna, to, what we wanna relocate. Uh, good uh, relocation. Uh, yeah, good relocation candidates um, are small files uh, which belongs to partly populated clusters. Old files, old and executable files uh, are good candidates. Why? Because old files are unlikely to be changed. For example, if we have a small file which has really, really small M time, it has a huge probability which, which, which will be uh, grown in a near future. So it's not good uh, 
uh, it's not a good idea to relocate it right now. Let's leave it. Uh, if we have um, executable files and very old files, it, we can park it and um, leave it. It's like, um, it's sort of book. If you have a good book you wanna, in handy, just sort it and place it right here. It's what we do. Here's a picture where the class, uh, we, we divide our files into classes. Uh, green uh, are files which are executable and small. We have a list of these uh, files and we know that they belong to bucket one and bucket two and they are partly populated. So what we can do, we can park it into one of these buckets, just move all these blocks to one. And third state um, is picture the same. And so what we do, we scan our list which we built and just start to relocate these blocks one to another. Here's the picture of uh, the file system we saw after relocation happens. We just scan it and they all belong to B1. B2 became empty, so later um, virtual image can throw it and free it so no one will have to pay for that space. It's not needed anymore. Um, actually, that's all. And now how we use it. Um, one can use uh, this tool as on a regular basis. For example, in OBZ case, we run it um, on a night, uh, inside uh, Chrome, like in a nightly basis, um, when uh, IO is not, uh, is not crucial, it's good time to pack your uh, image. Actually, it's quite similar to FSTream. Who of you run FSTream inside your file system? Yeah. yeah. So it's almost the same. So it's reasonable to run uh, defrag tool first and then run um, uh, trimfs after that. So this B2 bucket will be freed uh, completely. Okay. Customer, now go back to the customer. I send him uh, this solution, I describe how to use it, and he said that PLOOP, uh, now I do happy about the virtual image size, it's very close to actual usage, but damn it, it works really, really long. You have to do it something about that. Actually, it's fun that the problem was not inside the relocation part, but inside um, page block destroying itself. So we're still working on that problem. Okay. Now go back to the source. Uh, first one is uh, a source code of defragmentation tool I wrote. Um, Unfortunately, I have to wrote a um, separate version from uh, XT4 already have XT, uh, XT4 defrag too, but it can handle uh, directory fragmentation and it was too hard to adopt, so I wrote my tool from scratch. And second is um, a, a high level tool which run uh, several uh, execution of XT4 defrag for each containers. Okay, um, actually XT, um, my tool is only works for XT4. 
but um, it's not actually XT4 specific. The only thing we need to do to adopt it to other file system is to, um, to change a first part of uh, first stage of uh, space scanning. It's like to understand which block are free, which block are not. Uh, Dave Chinner published um, uh, IPI to cross-platform um, cross uh, API, which allowed to walk your file system and understand which blocks are free, which blocks are not. Um, actually, it's still not um, committed to main Linux kernel, but I hope this someday this happen so we can make a real cross file system tool which, which just works. Yeah, and of course, massive testing and performance tuning is still required. Um, even if with the good uh, defragmentation techniques, we still have to uh, do some works in the future. Um, uh, SMR disk era is coming. Uh, so even if before that time you do not care about fragmentation of your file system, with SMR disk you have to do that. Uh, SMR disk are just a normal um, disk uh, which has not a random write, uh, which have very, very bad performance on random write. They have only sequential writes. Um, and it's, I, as I understand, it became popular in, uh, in um, uh, very soon. So file system, general file system, have to do something about that. Dave Chinner uh, starts some work uh, in that area. His proposal is to hide um, actual file system uh, hierarchy inside some smart block allocator. Um, this approach help us to to works better for SMR disk and thing provisioning disk and virtual images disk sys. Um, the only problem we have to deal with this is a garbage collection. It's always fun problem if like we say, it's very good theory to let's do it sequentially and leave it go and leave old stuff for a garbage collection. Everybody uh, know how to write sequentially, but no one knows how to do the garbage collection. That actually works for any algorithms, file system, or memory management. So a tiny, tiny problem we, uh, we try to define uh, garbage collection, actually a, huge, uh, actually a huge problem which no one know how to solve it. And so let's just leave it at the moment. Okay, I'm almost done. Here's my email. Here's the uh, GitHub address of two. If you can test it, if you want to run it on a daily basis, please welcome. And thank you for listening. Any questions? Okay. Um, yeah, um, actually, um, yeah, uh, the question was, uh, uh, whenever it's, uh, whenever my tool and my approach can handle metadata uh, fragmentation, the answer is no, uh, because uh, my tool is online uh, tool, and it's not that hard, it's not that easy to make um, online 
of fragmentation to for metadata because you have, you may, just imagine, you have a DM tree and it has a lot of kernel stuff inside the kernel which uh, point to that date block. So you have to scan a whole uh, DM tree uh, inside page cache and throw it all from the page cache and only after that you can do that. Actually, it's doable, but um, it's not, um, it's, it's a second problem uh, which affects us. It's not that important. Date problem is much worse. So it's to do. It's my to-do list, yeah. And, yep. And uh, in the current situation, we have a, uh, different machines which are running from very complex file system like C64 or whatever. The by the end, this optimization of C64 is a problem because we have a simpler file system into the DM, which are just trying to minimize the space and then consider that the underlying C64 file system, which is hosted on the, on the physical host, is doing all the management of storing the file in this local environment. Um, um, yes, uh, the question is why we ever have to use uh, uh, a complex file system, let's leave it for, let's, let's try to automatically compact as possible, yes? Yes. Um, that was my first idea. I just um, modify XT4 to try to be as compact as uh, it should. It's like um, if I use only four gigabytes of data, do not try to spread for uh, a whole disk. Let's just try to use a four plus one gigabyte. That's not works because some, uh, file system itself became fragmented. For example, you allocate small file and one after and later you want to append it. But it's all uh, it's have no space inside. So it have to allocate it somewhere. So um, so call it aging a file system aging problem because it's worse and worse and worse and worse because if your file system is very close to full uh, that's your uh, idea, to make it uh, very full, uh, virtually full. Um, aging problem arise really significantly, so um, we have to make a good decision. Um, that's why I divide my, um, I have to divide files into separate, separate groups. I have to relocate only old and small files and executable files because I do know that such files will not change in near future. So I had to compact it. I can't uh, compact several, I, okay. yeah. uh, I cannot compact uh, small but frequently change its files uh, pack, um, one to another because it's result in fragmentation. Okay, any other? Yeah, we don't have time for more questions. Fortunately, we, have, we, we need to start again in two okay. minutes, so. Thank you. Thanks.